back here at Redbird Arena where for Illinois State they're glad to be home the birds completing a five-game road trip in which they lost four straight they're playing Samford the Bulldogs have been on the road for five straight as well so a couple of teams that have lived out of their suitcases playing in normal tonight and Redbirds looking to snap a four-game losing streak it's two and four ISU against four and two Samford let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the visiting Bulldogs from Birmingham, Alabama. The forwards in the front court, it's John Mills and Corey Green. Philip Romelli is the center. And Chris Weaver and Cornell Felton, a very good backcourt for the Bulldogs of Jimmy Tillett in his fifth year. 78 wins, 46 losses. His teams have gone to the uh, NCAA tournament two of the last three years. Redbirds will start Shedrick Ford and Dirk Williams in the front court. Williams, a last-minute addition to the starting lineup. Bebakar Bojang is the center. Greg Alexander and Randy Rice, the backcourt. Of course, ISU is coached by Tom Richardson in his third season at ISU. 32 up and 33 down. Redbirds certainly glad to be back home after that five-game road swing and ten ball games. They need the uh, support of the home crowd here tonight to get this thing back on track. The, the blow by Therese Price into this team is certainly still being felt, but they need to come out of that and move ahead with this team they have. The Samford Bulldogs will wear navy blue with white trim. Illinois State with white home uniforms, which they've seen just one time this year with the red trim. And the opening tip is controlled by Illinois State as Randy Rice goes back and gets in the backcourt. And we're underway here in normal ISU and Samford. Here on CBS 31, Kurt Peglin, Matt Taphorn with you. We're glad you're alongside for the first of our ISU telecasts for the upcoming season. And two of the newcomers on the floor for the Redbirds, Bojang and Alexander, have done tremendously well in the early going for the Birds, both averaging nearly 12, 13 points a ball game. Bojang's first shot is no good. Ramelli, his first defensive rebound, and now Samford, a team that has been compared to Princeton as far as its offense is concerned, with back cuts like that and three-point shooting like this. Corey Green from the outside can't get it. Alexander clears for the birds. That's a good point, Kurt. That's Kurt. That certainly is their offensive mindset. A lot of back cuts. They get the ball inside, kick it back out when the defense sucks in for those open three-point shots. Now Shedrick Ford. He misses. Loose ball on the floor. Felton gets it. We saw Felton a couple of years ago. He's a transfer from Akron. The Redbirds played at Akron two seasons ago when Cornell Felton was in the Zips backcourt. Now he's playing at Samford. See Sanford really tries to extend the defense out on the floor and then get those back cuts to the basket. And there's a turnover, the first one of the game. Redbirds come away with it now. It's Rice in transition. And now Bojan. Man-to-man -man defense for the Bulldogs. Sir from Williams is inside, really had his man pinned on his back. Didn't see him in there for the easy put-up. This is Williams' first touch now on the baseline. He works it. He draws the foul. He's going to get to the free throw line. Dirk Williams has been a little frustrated in the early going of this season, only averaged about three points a game. They really were expecting more out of Dirk in the early going, but he's had some great practices. The coaching staff is really still high on Dirk, the sophomore this year from Pekin, Illinois. Just had a tremendous freshman year, and they're really expecting big things out of him this year. Williams is one of those guys, as you well know, Matt, that's been banged up. He's just battled injuries. He's perhaps really never been 100% in either of the first two years that he's been here at ISU. No, it's one thing after another. Before the ball game, I talked to him. He felt like he was getting coming down with a bit of bronchitis, too, so we'll see how that affects him today. Boy, John Munn, the ISU trainer, has certainly <laughs> been a busy man in the last month with a number of Redbird injuries. He's got he's ankles. He's his keep. My goodness, he's got ankle sprains and knee injuries and wrist injuries. Both free throw makes for Williams gives ISU the first lead of the game at 2-0. This is a new wrinkle for the Redbirds again this year with Bojank playing that point on the zone press. Sanford did a nice job in breaking the pressure. And now from the outside, a three ball is up and down by Chris Weaver, and it's 3-2 Sanford. Yeah, defensive transition that time. They didn't match up, and you don't want to leave Chris Weaver open with that easy of a look at the basket. Well, we expect to see plenty of three-point shots from the Bulldogs, as we said in the open. They average about 12 more three-point shots than the Redbirds do. Nice move by Ford. Yeah, that's definitely a mismatch right there for Shedrick Ford got Corey Green trying to guard him inside and Ford definitely has the advantage with his inside game. Ford's first two points. ISU has regained the lead at 4-3. And a man defense obviously shown by the Redbirds. We've got a whistle away from the basketball and it's against Illinois State. I think Bojang was trying to get position defensively that time against Mills inside. Excuse me, against Ramelli. And uh, got a little too aggressive and was wh whistled for the foul. Oh! 
The Sanford Bulldogs are from Birmingham, Alabama, and this is the first meeting ever between the two teams, and we're going to get a couple of foul shots as Weaver penetrates and drew the contact. And that's the situation you can create offensively when you when you do have as many guys on the floor that can shoot that three-point shot as you get the ability to penetrate. If the defense doesn't commit to you, you can take it all the way to the basket. That time, Chris Weaver, again, we had mentioned the three-year letterman senior has done very well this year. Just, just the quarterback of this ball club. And so Weaver, who's a 71% foul shooter, rims the first one out. This is a guy that is certainly the leading edge of the offense, but uh, the Sanford people say he just hasn't shot the basketball well. I hate to see what happens when he does start shooting it well. Yeah, he's shooting 29% from three-point range. In his career, he's been closer to 40%. Right. So he saw, knocked down that first one he took with little trouble, and we kind of see his, his ability from that range. Cornell Felton with the quick hands knocked that ball out of bounds off of Randy Rice. Redbirds will regain possession. It's a 4-4 game. We've played two and a half minutes here at Redbird Arena. ISU comes into the ball game at two and four, and Sanford's the exact opposite at four and two. Somewhat of a rarity in this ball game for Randy Rice going against Carnell Felton. He's, he's been having to guard the, the bigger guards traditionally in the, in the first part of this season, and he's getting a little bit of a break today. Nice move by Dirk Williams, who's making the most of his spot start this afternoon. He has for the Redbird six and a steal that time by Randy Rice. Great awareness that time by Rice. Knew that Weaver took the back cut. He was able to just get his hand in on the pass. Lost the ball out of bounds, but it's going to be Redbird basketball. By the way, the officials working this afternoon's game, Dave Drucker, Tom O'Neill, and Mark Mayhood. Here's another look at that ball leaving uh, Randy Rice's hands. Again, the back cut from the top of the key. Randy Rice, good job of keeping his eye on the ball and his man at the same time came up with the steal. Redbirds have two steals in the early going. And Sanford's going to get its first steal. Great hustling effort that time by Chris Weaver. First deflected the pass inside by Greg Alexander. He's able to dive and get his hand on it. Maintain possession for Sanford. Weaver, Green, and Felton are the three guys that we'll probably be hearing a lot of for the Sanford Bulldogs this afternoon if they're to have success against Illinois State today. But Bojang needs to be careful not to guard Romelli out that high and, and pick up a silly foul. He almost got called for his second. Five on the shot clock now. Here's Romelli. Here's Mills. Shot clock violation. Good D by the Redbirds. And we talked about this in the earlier going, too, that Sanford is a very deliberate and patient team offensively. They're going to work and try to get their back cuts, their easy open shots from three-point range. That time the Redbirds did a good job of pushing the offense out and staying on the passer, not giving them a good look in, inside to those back cuts. That's the third Samford turnover, as opposed to just one for the Redbirds here in the first four, more, uh, four minutes. 6-4 ISU now. Here's Rice. Reach-in foul that time is going to be whistled against Corey Green. That'll be his first and the team's second. And again, Shedrick Ford trying to take advantage of that mismatch underneath. They were able to score once with him down there, and they were going back to the well. Officials timeout, Redbirds with the early lead, 6-4 here at Redbird Arena. 6-4 ISU with the early lead here at Redbird Arena. New wrinkle to our broadcast this year. We have sideline reporter Renee Charles. What you got for us, Renee? Bryson, I got a chance to sit down and talk with him before the game, find out how his injury is going, rehabilitation, find out what he had to say to the team. So at the half, we'll have that coming up for you guys. All right, thanks, Renee. Certainly that's been the big story with the Redbirds thus far is how do you replace a guy that's averaging better than 23 points a game? It was nice to see in that little spot on Renee there. Therese Bryson was in the background kind of laughing and joking on the bench, so it's good to see his spirits up a little bit. Yeah, Bryson is in plain clothes on the Redbird bench wearing a black wrist uh, cast, which will be on for about three months and about a year's worth of rehab. Certainly wish him the best. Good defensive position that time inside by Dirk Williams. Denying the look inside, but again, Sanford does a great job of moving the ball around the perimeter. Shot that time again by Mills is no good, and up high to get the ball is Bojan. And what a job by Randy Rice blocking out Romelli at 6'10 inside to get that board freed up for Bojang. Lob back door to Bojang, contact all over the place, no call, no call, still contact. Tipped out and controlled that time by Mills. Uh, Bojang did a good job of getting his hands on the ball and just went up on the wrong side of the rim. He actually had the right side of the basket free for an easy layup. Weaver, 
down the lane, up and a yep. blocking foul against ISU's Bojan. And what happened that time down the floor is the Redbirds got in a mismatch. They had Williams out on the floor guarding Chris Weaver, and he realized that. Took that little penetration, hesitated one moment to see if Randy Rice would come over and guard him, and took it all the way to the basket when he did, and Shedder Ford is a little too late getting over to draw that charge. Yeah. Chris Weaver, good, heady senior player. Pardon me, that foul is on Shedrick Ford. And that's Ford's second, Redbird's third team foul. Weaver back to the free throw line. And now we'll see Sean Jepson and Vince Green in the ball game for the first time for Illinois State. They'll give Randy Rice and Shedrick Ford a, a chance for a breather. And Vince Green, really a sophomore, but for his first year of eligibility playing, has done a great job off the bench for the Redbirds, averaging nearly, nearly seven points a ball game and their best three-point shooter out there on the floor. Made one, missed one. Did Weaver, 6-5, Redbirds with a basketball and a one-point lead. So it's Alexander, Bojang, Williams, Green, and Jepson on the floor for Illinois State. Here's Bojang now. Backs down on Romelli. Looks to spin, may have walked, he did. Uh, I thought that was questionable. There was a lot of movement that time, but I thought Bojang kept his left foot stationary, but the official obviously had a better viewpoint of it than we do here from courtside. Well, Babakar Bojang to the Redbird bench in favor of Casey Reed from Las Vegas. Reed is the transfer, and he's back in now for Illinois State. Another newcomer for the Redbirds. Does a great job defensively, especially he's one of their stoppers inside. That's him guarding Romelli now. Good extension there by Vince Green on the cut down the lane by Romelli. Half hook by Romelli rolls in. Nicely done in the paint. 7-6, the Bulldog lead. Romelli has about three inches inside on Casey Reed. Greg Alexander's first shot of the night is no good. Weaver back on the defensive backboards to rip it down for the Bulldogs. Just taking their time, bringing the ball down the floor. Want to get their offense set up. Not a lot of transition baskets out of this ball club. See a lot of interchanges out on the floor to try to get defensive mismatches by Samford. Always making that extra pass Absolutely. on the perimeter. Absolutely. Eight on the shot clock now. Mills with Williams on him, and he threw the ball away off from Melly's fingertips. And again, they're not, they don't panic when the, the shot clock starts to wind down. They, they always continue with their offensive movement, get their cuts, get their stop, spotting up from the three-point line. And every, every opportunity, they're looking for those, that extra pass. Alexander has been in the Redbirds starting lineup pretty much all year, Matt. He sure has. All six ball games so far. And now Bojang hits the turnaround jump shot. And we say that because it's rare that in the last 10 years, the Redbirds have only had two pure freshmen start the season opener. And uh, not only did Alexander start the season opener, but as you mentioned, his name's been in the starting lineup card every night. Nice backdoor play. And that's Romelli. exactly the pass that they're used to making. Good hands that time by the 6'10 Romelli cutting down the lane to pick up that bounce pass by Felton. He has the last four Samford points, and the Bulldogs are back in front 9-8 as we've played seven and a half minutes here at ISU. The other thing Samford does defensively very well is pushes the offense out beyond that three-point line. Jepson lost the ball on the floor, and it's going to be alternate no possession to the Bulldogs. Jepson that time fumbled the pass momentarily. Instead of trying to dribble it out of it, he needed to just pick it up. Chris Weaver again, very active defensively with his hands. And now Bojang is back in the game now for Illinois State, along with Reed. So the Redbirds trying to put a little bit of height back in there now. Dirk Williams gets his first breather. Here's B Brian Bojang in the game for the first time for the Bulldogs. Shot missed from the outside that time by Felton. Back from the Birds in transition. It's Jepson. And that's really where Jepson's at his best. He can get out and run the floor. He does a good job of finishing those transition plays and a great job clearing the boards by Bojang, getting it out to Green and up the floor. Not even a single bounce that time on transition. Back and forth. The Redbird lead is now one at 10-9. These are the kind of teams Sanford, like with his backdoor cut like this, man, they can just drive you crazy. 
so uh, well you know planned out and disciplined and again you, there's there's hardly any daylight where they make that pass but just right. enough and that's the second or third time that I've seen the Sanford players pass off the dribble and typically you're told the coach not to do that but they pick the ball up just off the dribble and simply make that bounce pass down the lane so Cornell Felton an 86 percent free thrower to the line he's right at about 10 points a game as we mentioned he's a transfer from Akron he's originally from Alexandria Virginia but uh, the name sounds a little bit familiar the Redbirds saw him a couple of years ago when he was playing with the Zips, 5'11", 165 pound guard. He splits his free throws, and it's a 10-10 ball game. 11.36 here to go in an entertaining first half. Stay tuned, more action in a minute from Redbird Arena. In Illinois State at two and four, they played some outstanding teams that are picked to win their conferences, so and a lot of games on the road, that's really gonna have a lot to do with it. Jepson with a quick release, can't get it. Casey Reed high up to get the board, but he's over the back, and it's going to be a foul on Reed. A yeah, good position that time on the uh, defensive boards by Eddie Harper, clearing out Casey Reed, and Reed just went up and climbing over the back of Reed, or of Harper, excuse me. By the way, the lone loss that Southern Illinois has suffered came against the Fighting Illini. Illinois has just won its game in Chicago against Arkansas in 94-91. Air ball that time out of bounds. Tyson Dorsey didn't catch any of the rim. And the Redbirds get it back. And Dorsey is one out of five on the season before that shot. So probably an ill-timed effort there with just getting into the ball game, not getting a chance to even get a, get a good sweat going. We'll try and tell you about these new Redbird players since there are so many of them. Vince Green, the guy with the basketball right now, sat out last year due to NCAA requirements and is now finally getting a chance to play for Illinois State. They're very high on him. You see he's got a quick first step, and he's going to get to the foul line. He does. That's one thing that Vince Green is, has done that Randy Rice has been unable to do, and that's make the defensive, play, defensive player play honest. You know, that time he take the ball strong to the basket. We also mentioned that he is their best three-point shooter, uh, shooting at almost 67%, six out of nine on the season. So a pair of free throws coming. For Vince Green, who has already three double-digit scoring games, and really for a point guard, you wouldn't expect that. But as you say, Matt, he shoots the three well, and you can see that he doesn't mind driving to the basket because he's got that explosive first step. He does not hesitate. Very confident player. He played for uh, Tom Richardson's brother in high school, Chicago brother Rice, who said that he was the best player he had. And they also had another Redbird there by the name of Rico, Rico Hill. Hill. Yeah. So the brother Rice pipeline to Illinois State continues. Nice drive down the lane, Corey Green. Now we mentioned him at the top of the broadcast that it's Green and Weaver, the two guys that have the experience on a young Samford team that's really, they've been carrying the load, and he showed it right there. 12-10 now, Bulldogs with the advantage. Not a very good team defensive effort that time by the Redbirds down the floor. And there's a three-pointer from the top of the circle for Vince Green. No hesitation at that time whatsoever, Vince Green as soon as he caught the ball, he looked right at the basket. That's a good sign of a good scorer out there. And this came after he missed those free throws. He wasn't shy at all about putting up a three-point shot. Halfway through this first half, 10 minutes to go, 13-12 Illinois State with a lead over the Samford Bulldogs here at Redbird Arena. And another air ball, that time put up by Eddie Harper. Back come the Redbirds now with a one-point lead in the basketball. Jepson thought about the lob, instead gives it up to Alexander. Here's Dirk Williams turn around. And Dirk really has been aggressive, I think, man, here in the first 10 minutes. He's really looked to the basket. Yeah, that's definitely a mismatch on the block. Dirk Williams at 6'8", Corey Green at 6'3". Williams does a good job of getting up over the top of Corey Green. As you can see, Green catches him right there on the elbow. Dirk Williams made his first two attempts. The one thing I wanted to point out with that last miss that time by Borjan, or I believe... No, it wasn't Borjan. It was Mills, I believe, from three-point range. They've had six different players yeah. attempt a three-point shot already here in the first ten minutes of the ballgame. Well, they are not shy about shooting from beyond the arch. And that offense is really built around it. When you've got a perimeter offense and back cuts, you're going to either stop the back cut or you're going to stop the three-point shot, but you can't do both historically. And they do have a good complement to their perimeter game with Romelli. He's very active inside, has a nice little array of offensive moves his little jump hook we saw earlier and his back cut earlier made an easy layup as well Dirk Williams now with six points for the Redbirds he is the leading scorer Redbirds show some backcourt pressure with a three-point lead at 15-12 
what a bonus to have a guy like Bojang out there at 6'9 to be the point man on your press. Really causes a lot of problems for the opponents. Especially with those long arms. Felton thought about the three but gave it up and here we go with this pass, uh, passing exhibition. Now there's a backdoor cut. Felton laid it in. A great patience that time by Eddie Harper. He waited. First of all, Felton wasn't open. Then he got beyond the defender and gave it to him right at the basket where he could lay it in. 15-14 now. It's a one-point Redbird lead. Nine minutes to go here in the opening half. Lob down low. Ford had a triple team on him. Gave it up to Green. Now Jepson. 12 on the shot clock. Now the pull-up from Jeff. Off the back of the iron, no good. Tipped into the corner and controlled by Felt. And now Sanford has a chance to shoot for the lead. And not very good recognition at that time by Jepson. As soon as he came off that screen, he had Williams just open up around on the baseline as Williams' defender came over to guard Jepson. Nice overplay that time by Sean Jepson who came away with the steal. Good anticipation that time on the block by Jepson. He doesn't come up with that ball. That's an easy lay-in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the chance you take on that overplay. Williams, his pull-up is missed. Felt in the board. Boy, Eddie Harper has really locked down Shedrick Ford on the offensive end. Ford is touching the ball. As soon as he gets it, he's giving it up. Each team has made just five field goals here in the opening 12 minutes plus of action. Now another backdoor cut, and that time Jepson got his hand on it. It's going to be out of bounds. Nice play that time by Jepson. That was a help defensive play that time by Jepson. It was Shedrick Ford's man who got away from the basket. 7.39 to go to halftime. Redbirds hanging on to a one-point lead at Redbird Arena. Well, as we listen in during the timeouts, the coaching staff is trying to tell the team, pay attention to what's going on. Watch the game. Be aggressive. You're letting a Sanford block you out. You're not getting in there. He's trying to tell them, be aggressive. Be confident. You can win this game if you play hard enough. And that's what he's telling them in the timeouts. We'll keep listening and keep you up to date. All right. Thanks, Renee. She'll be roaming the sidelines for us this afternoon. Sounded like we had Tom Richardson reporting from the sideline there. <laughs> Every now and again, you can hear the coach working on his team. Not one of those sideline microphones. 15-14, Illinois State with the lead. Seven and a half to go here in the first half. Fadeaway jumper rolls in. He just barely beat the shot clock. That's Romelli showing some touch from the baseline. Yeah, good little soft turnaround shot that time by Romelli. I thought Bojang did a good job defensively, keeping his hands up and not fouling. Redbird offense stuck on the perimeter here. Under seven minutes to go here in the half. Here's Bojang trying to create. Down the lane, drew some contact, but he walked. Another unforced error that time by the Redbirds. Really looking out of step offensively a little bit. Alexander hasn't been able to get on track. Ford, with the exception of the one basket, has really been taken out of the ball game. Again, the offense really gets spread out here get their back cut opportunities and spotting up for the three-point line. Yeah, the Bulldogs execute this offense so well by spreading the floor. Romelli wasn't going to hesitate there yeah. to hit, shoot the three either. Fifth turnover, whistled against Samford now. A little indecision that time by Chris Weaver. Tom Richardson certainly glad to have his team back. Jimmy Tillett is been living out of the suitcase. This team on a four-game road trip just as the Redbirds finish up a five-game road swing. Here's Green. His second three ball is no good. Ball on the floor. Redbirds get it back. It's Ford. Open pull-up jumper from 17 is no good. Foul away from the basketball and it's on the Redbirds. Bojang, second foul. Official gave him a little hesitation look that time as Bojang kind of slapped him on the behind. Bojang is one of those newcomers that I think Redbird fans are going to enjoy watching. You've already mentioned, Matt, what he can do on the press with those long arms and be the point man, but he's just an exciting guy with a big smile. He jumps through the ceiling as well. Offensively, he's actually the leading scorer at 13 a game, and I just don't think they've gone to him enough yet here in the early going. 
And there's a turnover by Romelli as he moved that pivot foot. You know, here we are, six minutes left in the first half, and the score 16 to 15. Yeah. This is being played just at the pace that Sanford wants to play. They don't care if this is a 40-point ball game. Not at all. Here's Ford, who's been quiet, draws a double team. Harper again doing a great job on four down on the block. Yeah, he's just one of four from the field, making one of five. Nope, two out of five. <laughs> Ball didn't want to go in initially. Uh, he was a little far away to try to throw that one down, but still was able to get it to roll in. But Harper again doing a great job defensively on Shedrick Ford down on the block. Ford now has four points. Redbirds now have the lead, 17-16. But certainly, as Matt says, Samford's pace right now. And they just keep going. If they're not open for a moment at the three-point line, they back cut right to the basket. Weaver left open for three in front of the Redbird bench. Can't get it. Ripped down by Williams. Big rebound that time by Dirk Williams. Really went up, up after the ball. That's his first board. Now underneath Bojan. Loose ball Pick on it the up. floor. Looking, spinning, scoring. What a great effort that time by Bojan. Really stayed with it. Finally got his hands on the ball, put a fork in it. Picked it up, was able to get a nice little up fake and under, laid it up off the glass. Redbirds have matched their biggest lead of the afternoon now at 19-16. Four and a half to go here until halftime. Don't forget at halftime, stick around. We'll have an interview with Tyrese Bryson, the injured Redbird star who's out for a year with a wrist injury. Get his thoughts on the injury and his rehab at halftime. Weaver cuts, but it's going to be goaltending is. Dirk Williams went up and his hand was in the cylinder. Yeah, Williams wasn't quite over far enough to help out defensively, but Shedrick Ford is really one who needed to be there to help out. You see, Williams didn't get quite over far enough and got his hand caught up into the basket. Randy Rice is going to come back into the basketball game now, and Andy Strandmark makes his first appearance for the Redbirds. So the Redbird five on the floor will be Strandmark, Rice, Ford, Williams, and Jebson. Meanwhile, Sanford has on the floor Cornell Felton, Philip Romelli, Eddie Weaver, Chris, I should say Chris Weaver, Eddie Harper, and Will Gardner. Here's Jepson. He stepped on the baseline. Redbirds turn it over. Boy, that's just a silly mistake that a senior shouldn't be making. He's got to know where he's at on the ball, ball floor. 3.59 to go till halftime. Redbirds 19, Samford 18 here at ISU. Welcome back to the ISU versus Sanford game here in Bloomington Normal. Coach is telling the team, stay aggressive. Do not relax. This game is close. They can win it if they continue to play with each other, read each other, and play aggressively. Make sure you stick around at halftime. I had a chance to talk with Tyrese Bryson. We'll show you that interview coming up at halftime. Kurt, Matt. All right, Ray. You get a look at Tyrese in plain clothes and a black cast these days as he is in that cast for about three months due to that wrist injury. Certainly not what he had envisioned for his uh, fifth year, senior year here at Illinois State. Yeah, not at all. Preseason player of the year selection in the Valley. Another back door. Felton lost the ball on the end line, though. Teams have been a little sloppy in the last couple of possessions. Yeah, Jepson's really struggled with that back cut pass. And, and defensively, Sean get, tends to have his get his head turned and not keep his eye on the ball and his man at the same time. And that's really uh, what Sanford is hoping to accomplish on the offensive end. There's Strandmark on the nice feet from Randy Rice. You know, as nice as it was to see Andy lay that in and get two points, it would have been great to see him throw that down because he really needs some confidence. And Jimmy Tillett with a quick timeout. He wants a 30-second timeout. He didn't like that last uh, possession, the way the Redbirds were able to easily exploit the defense there. And I think you've mentioned it, Matt, that with the size differential, the Redbirds really ought to be trying to pound it down their throat. Well, on that play, as you know, previously in this game, I'd mentioned when Sean came off that screen, he took the shot when, when Dirk was open. The same thing happened there. That time Randy comes off the screen. Andy does a good job of releasing going to the basket. He's wide open. They need to take advantage of those situations when they present themselves. We mentioned that Sanford is playing in its fourth straight road game. Actually, six of their first seven games have been away from home, and Tom Richardson can relate to that. His Redbirds are coming off a five-game road trip, and bang, bang, they've got back-to-back -back home games today and tomorrow. Yeah, watch this move. You've got Romelli trying to guard. Rice coming off that screen and Andy Strandmark wide open going to the basket. Does a good job getting the ball in the basket. Again, I'd like to see him at 6'10", throw that down. Backcourt pressure applied by the Redbirds. And the Bulldogs 
break it relatively easily. Under three and a half here to go. The Redbirds with a three-point lead. Low scoring first half, 21-18. Now Romelli. Here's the hook shot again. He's made two of them. Well, Romelli looks good inside. 6'10", sophomore. He's four out of four from the field in this ballgame, really showing a wide array of shots. That's going to be a turnover by the Redbirds. As Boy, Ford, Ford, Ford does pass. not look comfortable out there at all. He's really getting pressured out on the floor. Eddie Harper's done a great job since he's been in the ball game, and he just does not look comfortable out, out there on the perimeter. And he's immediately put on the Redbird bench. And it's Williams in now along with Alexander. Strandmark and Rice and Jebson. Under three minutes to go till halftime. He just walked right there. Referee standing right on top of him. Caught the ball and moved both feet. Back yeah, back cut. Romelli's pass that time intended for Weaver goes out of bounds. Yeah, just stayed a little too low on the floor that time. Didn't, didn't come up off the bounce pass to Weaver, but that's that cut that they're looking to try to, to accomplish. And, Mil and uh, excuse me, Romelli from out there on the top does a great job of getting the ball inside. Rice trying to penetrate, now Jepson off the screen. Redbird's offense has been out of sync, and that pass proves it. They're, they're making the difficult pass instead of the easy pass. You know, that time Andy's trying to throw the ball cross court rather than making the next pass out on top and swinging the ball around. Redbird's seventh turnover here in the first half. Sanford has eight. We approach the two-minute mark left in this one. Illinois State 21 and Sanford 20. Kirk Pegler, Matt Taphorn. Renee Charles with you here at Redbird Arena. And again, the Bulldogs just real patient and content with running their offense at the perimeter, waiting for that back cut. If they don't get it, they'll try a three. There's a collision right in front of the official, and Jepson's on the floor. And they're going to call the foul on Jepson as he was just basically run over that time by Felton. The one thing the Redbirds were doing this time down the floor is when they made those cuts, they were bumping him, which is what they need to do, slow those guys down a little bit. Saw Strandmark bump one, bump one guy. Coming down the, the middle of the lane, kind of threw him off his path. That time, Jepson was trying to do the same thing, got Wilson for the foul. And Felton, who's already made a couple of free throws, is back there now for the bonus shot. And now Brian Borjan comes back in the game, and he might be familiar to several fans in Central Illinois who've seen him play in the state tournament. He's from Rock Falls, part of that championship team a couple of years ago that won the state championship Class A basketball. But recruited and now playing in Birmingham, Alabama for the Sanford Bulldogs, who have a 22-21 lead here at Redford Arena as we're approaching the 92nd mark left here in this opening half. And Jeff's fortunate to come back up with that ball after he really pushed off. Here's Strandmark going up strong. Good strong move that time by Strandmark and good dish inside in traffic by Sean Jepson. Back and forth. The lead now one for Illinois State. The largest lead of this basketball game. Twice ISU had a three-point advantage. Since that, it's been 1-1-1 one, one, one each way. Sanford with a one-point lead. Redbirds answer with a one-point lead. And now there's one minute to go here in the half. Here's Borjang from the outside. It's a three. He may have even gotten fouled. It could have been a four-point play. Didn't hesitate at all that time. He had Dirk Williams guarding him out on the perimeter. Just put it right in his face. So now it's a two-point lead for Samford. There's about a 20-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's a three now for Jepson. It's no good and tipped out into the corner and grabbed by Felt. And now the shot clock is off, and the Bulldogs will certainly hold for one here. And that tip that time by Strandberg doesn't do you a lot of good. you got to be able to grab that ball with both hands. You see the time in the corner now. And Sanford really content just to pull this out. And Jepson really picks up a cheap foul away from the ball, trying to bump. I believe it was Mills as he was going through the lane. 21, Sean Jepson, his third. That's Sean a, Jepson, yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's bad, just a... Badly timed foul to pick up right before the half. 15 seconds left. Picks up his third foul, and he'll go to the bench.
Eddie Harper at the line for Stanford. And so Harper's going to be at the free throw line now. He's got an opportunity with one and one to give his club its largest lead of the afternoon. Well, the Bulldogs have just got to be impressive, or impressed at least with their guttiness. They've come in here and they've hung right with the Redbirds and they've just played their game. They've not let anybody else dictate what they wanted to do. Well, and at four and two, they're used to playing on the road. That's right. So this is not a situation they're unaccustomed to earlier this year. Four point lead now for Sanford. Redbirds get a final opportunity here in this last possession. Here's Green spinning, three seconds to shoot. Looking for help, hangs, fires, rims it, uh-uh. And the Bulldogs have a four point lead as they head to the locker room at halftime. It's 27-23 in favor of the Sanford Bulldogs, their largest advantage here at the break. Certainly Surgeons yeah. haven't clearly shot the ball well, haven't got the ball inside where they need to do some damage. Renee Charles is standing by with Tom Richardson. Well, Coach Richardson, during the first half, I hear you telling the players, be aggressive, play harder. What do you think Stanford has done to surprise you during the first half, and what changes for the second half? Well, they really haven't done anything to surprise us, Renee. We didn't, we didn't offensive rebound very well. That's what I was telling to be aggressive on the boards. I think we maybe got one or two offensive rebounds. And then defensively, we're doing okay offensively. We're not taking care of the ball. So we got to be more aggressive inside, get the ball inside. Our defense is okay, but our offense needs a little bit of the work. So that's what we'll look to talk about at halftime. All right, thanks a lot. Coach, good luck in the second half. When we come back during the halftime, I had a chance to talk with Tyrese Bryson. We'll have that coming up next. Halftime at Redbird Arena, 27-23, the Sanford Bulldogs. With the lead, Kurt Pegler along with Matt Taphorn. Rough first half, not only for the Redbirds offensively to get things in sync, but their defense, again, is allowing a very good percentage, aren't they? Well, a very deliberate offensive approach by Sanford. They're 7 out of 7 on their two-point shot attempts. A lot of that, Romelli's 4 out of 4 inside. Good soft touch around the basket. They've done a good job guarding with three-point range, only 2 out of 9. But they're giving up 50% from the field against opponents this year. They need to improve on that. They have gave up 56% in the first half. Redbirds have some more. Redbird basketball, one of the first names that comes to mind is Tyrese Bryson. Right now, it's kind of a difficult time for you. So how are things going? Well, I mean, it's going all right. I mean, it's frustrating knowing I should be out there playing and, I mean, and our record so far and my injury and don't knowing, I mean, what going, what's going for my future right now. So, I mean, it's kind of frustrating right now. Well, let's talk about the injury. A couple of weeks ago, playing Weber State, you go up for a layup, you come down, dislocated the wrist. What's the first thing you thought of when you walked over to the bench? I was done for the year. I mean... I knew once I wasn't able to bend my wrist that I was done. And the doctor said, let's take him to the hospital. Then I knew for sure I was done for the year. I mean, I never felt like that ever in my life. So a bit, a bit frustrated, angry, upset. But now when you look at this, the cast on the arm, the rehabilitation, what do you think may become in the future? I mean, is it the rest of the season? But what about next year? Well, hopefully, um, first of all, I can get my wrist better. And get my year back and graduate from school um, this coming May and hopefully with all that come together I'll be a little happier now. All right, we'll take a quick break and we come back we'll talk with Tyrese about what is he saying to the team and what is the team asking him as far as advice and what's happening right now. We'll be right back. Now you said it was a bit frustrating to be sitting on the sidelines. This is the first game that you've actually been to and actually had to sit on the sidelines. What's going through your mind right now? Well, I mean, it's frustrating, like I said. I mean, it really going to be frustrating watching them play. Well, hopefully they can, by me being out there, can motivate them a little bit and get back on the right track. Now, have you had a chance to talk with the team? What kind of uh, advice have they asked you for? And what have you told them to keep them positive? Well, I talked to them, I mean, all last week in practice. And I tell them they could still win without me. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, just like Jordan, I mean, you know, they could still win without me. I think right now they didn't think they could. I think after the games this weekend, I think they know that they can win without me. Now, you had mentioned earlier before we started the interview, you said you want to keep them positive and let them know that the seniors, after this, they're going to miss it because you miss it right now. Yeah, I mean, I told the seniors, I mean, after it's over, you're going to miss it. I mean, you think you're not. I mean, things frustrated now. 
But I mean, I miss all the days that I didn't come and practice and practice hard. I mean, some days I loaf, all them days just come when you, you're not playing and you just think about all them days. And I was telling them, once it's over with, like in March and April, man, you're going to really think about this. So, I mean, you might as well give it all you got now. All right, Tyrese, thanks for stopping and talking. 27-23, let's take a look at some of those first half highlights. Well, again, what Sanford's trying to do is get that back cut going to the basket. And here we see Romelli getting one of his four buckets. He had eight points to lead the way. And on the other end, Illinois State has done a great job in and around the basket. There, Bojang lays in two of his points, but they haven't gotten it in inside enough. And here again, Shedrick Ford gets up to the bucket to lay in two of his four points in the first half. Clearly, on the other end of the floor for Sanford, Chris Weaver is one of their guns. Here he knocks down a big three early in the ball game, one of only two three-point shots that they've made in the first half but they're seven out of seven again on points inside the arc. But one thing to consider is Samford is 4-0 and in games in which they have led at halftime, and the Redbirds have lost every game in which they've allowed the opponent to shoot 50 or better percent. Right now, Samford is ahead and shooting 56%. The Redbirds out to snap a couple of those streaks here this afternoon. And if you're a Redbird fan, that's not necessarily the statistic you want to hear coming into the second half. But that's a sight that you like to see. Dirk Williams, who starts the second half much like he starts the first half with a quick bucket. Yeah, Dirk Williams leading the way now with eight points for the Redbirds. He's really been active offensively looking at the bucket. And he is now the game's leading scorer with eight points. He and Romelli each have eight. Sanford's first possession. Here's Romelli. Here's the hook again. He's three out of three with that shot. That's man. tough to defend. Even though Bojang is 6'9 and got long arms, Romelli does a good job of getting that ball up high. That's a tough shot to defend. Ten points now for Romelli, the first player in double figures this afternoon. It's back to a four point Sanford advantage. Well, he's just a good looking player. And the one thing Sanford has done very, very well is extended their defense out beyond the three point line to really cause pressure on the ball. Williams is really working it down low. He wanted it, but instead the Redbirds go to the outside. Rice's shot is no good, but tipped out of bounds, and ISU's going to get it back. That's a good sign to see Randy Rice shoot that shot. He hesitates quite often offensively. That time he just caught it, shot it in one, one fluid motion. Just didn't go down. Quickly off the inbounds. Again, Dirk Williams catches and shoots. Nice setup that time on the inbounds play. Williams got his defender to lean one way, came off the screen, a wide open from about 10 feet. Williams now with 10. This has been his best effort of the year so far. Romelli answers. And Ford is just too late getting over on that play, helped defensively. Even though Romelli catches the ball, he's right on him. He's still got six inches on him. He's got to get over there while the ball's in the air. 12 points now for Philip Romelli, the sophomore center out of New Orleans. Romelli has yet to miss a shot from the field. Now, man, he's six out of six. Here's Ford. No good, but over the back, I think it's going to be Bojang. I actually think they're going to call this one on Dirk Williams. He really came over the back that time of Corey Green. Yep, you called that one right. It's going to be Williams instead. And Ford continues to struggle offensively from the perimeter. Still a four-point Sanford lead now. This is what it was at halftime. Green penetrates, now kicks it up. Here's Felton from the outside. That's down a three ball. And great recognition, recognition that time again by Corey Green. He drew three defenders on him, driving that ball into the paint. Was able to kick it off to Felton for the wide open three point shot. It is a seven point Sanford lead, the largest of the game for either side. And here's a guy who hasn't scored yet for the Redbirds, Greg Alexander. Averaging nearly 12 and a half a game. Bojang from the outside. As slow as the offense was to come in the first half, both teams have stepped it up here after the break. Thirty-four twenty-nine. The Redbirds trail by five and come away with the basketball. And good anticipation again, once again, by Randy Rice going up for that ball. And that time Rice penetrates, takes it right to the hole and scores. Rice does it at both ends of the floor. Comes up with a big steal defensively. Actually trailed the play that time, was able to come up with a layup. It's his first hoop. He's pulled the Redbirds to within three. Here's Weaver now, who's been quiet since the opening minutes of the basketball game. Romelli really created some distance from himself that time. See if Bojan gets the ball back on transition. Rice all the way down. Up, and he's going to get to the foul line. The Redbirds now taking it right to the basket in transition when they can get that seam in the defense. They're going right at the hole. And Rice is really trying to create some things offensively through transition. You see the 
Sanford playing kind of with their hands on their knees, kind of grab their shorts. They're not as deep as Illinois State. Illinois State plays nine guys easily. See the first half stats there. Sanford shot 56% from the field. We talked about that. Illinois State giving up 50% on the season. Illinois State only 43% from the field. Well, Rice, who was held scoreless in the first half, has really been aggressive here in the first couple minutes of the second half, taking a couple of balls right to the hole. Has a chance now for his fourth point of the night and pull the Redbirds back to within one. And he does. So after being down by seven, the Redbirds have now closed the gap to one, and they're showing full court pressure. And points they get out of Randy Rice offensively are a bonus. Certainly he's not out there to create offense, but when he does, really helps out the Redbirds really freeing up some of their other players. Backdoor cut, Weaver to Felton, walk. and he sure was. You know, and that was an excellent pass that time by Chris Weaver from out top. And Randy Rice did exactly what he needs to do defensively. He kept his eye on the ball and his man, really had his hand there and created the turnover situation. And that's three consecutive possessions now where Sanford's turned the basketball over. And now Illinois State, once down by seven, now has a chance to shoot for the lead. Alexander gives it up to Williams, and now back to Alexander. Thought about the three momentarily. Now Alexander for three. Just no wasn't good. ready to shoot that shot. You could tell the way he caught the ball, he wasn't ready to shoot it. He's really getting frustrated out there offensively, trying to force things to get, get himself going. Well, he's only had two attempts now from the field. He's missed them both. Still scoreless. The freshman from Lincoln. Now it's Green. He backs in on Ford. He spins and scores. And Dirk Williams needs to come over and help defensively that time. He had him pinned inside the lane, but he need to come over and swat that shot. Oh, he got the ball in a great position in the paint there. It's awfully hard to defend that once he gets it down that close to the basket. They've got a mismatch inside with Corey Green trying to guard Dirk Williams, but the Redbirds have not taken advantage. Well, Bojang does. And I tell you what, the Redbirds can score at will inside. They've, they've shown it throughout the ball game, and they just need to keep going in there and not worry about the perimeter game. Back to a one-point Samford lead now. The pace has picked up in Absolutely. this ball game. The Redbirds Absolutely. have three substitutions in at the scorer's table right now. And this is where the depth on their team may come into play. Well, it was like pulling teeth to get points in the first half, but that's not been the case here in the second half. The Redbirds have tried to step it up. Ball out of bounds. Sanford retains possession. They'll have it when we come back. 14.56 to go here at regulation. The Bulldogs lead the Redbirds 36-35. Kurt Pegler, Matt Taphorn, Renee Charles with you. The first ISU telecast of the year. Redbirds trying to snap their first four-game losing streak since January of 2000. Oh, a three the to buzzer. beat the shot clock. Eddie Harper, a bailout three, and it goes down. Boy, the Bulldogs needed something. They had turned the basketball over in three consecutive possessions and then knocked down that three as the shot clock was expiring. Back to a four-point advantage now for Sanford. Jepson's in the ballgame for ISU. Here's Alexander who's still scoreless. It's Vince Green, Sean Jepson, Casey Reed, Greg Alexander, and Babakar Bojang on the floor for ISU. Seven seconds on the shot clock now. Now, a long three, Alexander. And Alexander had a much better look, got himself set. The ball was given to him right the, the exact location he needed to get, gather himself to go to the basket. Good recognition that time by Green and good shot by Alexander. Sanford very deliberate on the offensive end. Likes to work the perimeter if you're just joining us. They love the back cut. They love the three. Here's a three ball. Again, it's Harper. He misses, and this time it's ripped down by Casey Reed, and the Redbirds now shoot for the lead. Sanford just waits for the defense to make a mistake and then tries to take advantage. Back door live. Here's Casey Reed, but he may have dribbled on the baseline. That's what he did. Boy, and the fans that have a look at the baseline, even the players that are on the bench just cannot believe that call. Tom Richardson is cleared out at the end of his bench. And I, I can't believe that the official would call that wrong. He was right on top of the play. But certainly the uh, crowd and the bench did not agree. 
Mark Mayhood, not the most popular man in Redbird Arena right now. Redbirds come away with a steal again. That's now 12 turnovers for the Bulldogs. Now Green gives it up to Reed. Again, ISU with a chance to reclaim the lead, which they haven't had since about a minute to go in the first half. Whistle away from the basketball, and it's going to be against Romelli of the Bulldogs. Can you say makeup call? That could have been. <laughs> could have been. Watch how Alexander gets himself square to the basket, catches the ball, nice fluid motion, knocks down the three, even a couple of steps beyond the three-point line. Great job that time again on the penetration by Vince Green to set him up. That was his first three. He lead the team in steals. He came away with one just a minute ago. And so you know why this freshman from Lincoln has impressed the ISU coaching staff. He's tough, he's gritty, he can knock down the open jumper, and he plays good defense. Well, and the other thing about Alexander, too, he's, only, he's got 14 assists on the season, only three turnovers. Right. For a guy that plays a perimeter, that's just remarkable, and especially for a freshman. Very heady player, played for his dad down at Lincoln High School. Great career, played, started four years, actually. Right, played with Brian Cook of Illinois, whom he'll see in a... About a week when the Redbirds play at the assembly hall. Boy, Jepson needs to put that ball up inside. Lucky he didn't get, get called for a travel. So Brian Borjan is whistled for his first foul and the fourth team foul now for Sanford. Foul's only four to one. That might come into play later in the ball game if either team is needing to foul. There's Alexander, and that time, again, man, he had a good look at the basket. And that time he saw a little bit more elevation on his shot. Good job that time again to get his shoulders square to the basket before taking the shot. Five points for Alexander. Redbirds have their first lead since late in the first half. It's 40-39. Reed guards Borjang, the Rock Falls, Illinois native. Here's Weaver now. Good Changed help. his shot. Mills. They got a mismatch inside. Six to shoot. Left open, Harper missed the three, Jepson the long rebound. Good defense, good action that time and help, help defense by the Redbirds. Williams for three, no good. Vince Green, the shortest player on the floor with the rebound. But he stayed after it, he didn't leave the team and head down defensively in transition. Alexander has the hot hand, missed it again. Out of bounds. And this time it was the Samford player, Cornell Felton, standing on the baseline. Redbird showing some energy. They head to the bench with 11.46 to go in the game and a one-point lead. See what the team is doing right now. However, he's urging the guys on the post, stand your ground, push the team back, push Stanford back a ways, stay on the defense, top it up a little bit, and watch them pass a little bit more around the outer rim. Keep your eyes open for that as we get back to the game. All right, Renee, yeah, the Redbird defense has turned it up they've come away with five turnovers here in the first eight minutes of the second half yeah they've really picked it up defensively but Sanford is still shooting a blistering pace they're at 61 percent now they're five out of seven in this half ah but the Redbirds just turned the basketball over as Vince Green couldn't get the ball in bounds it was a five second violation had the ball out underneath their own basket had nobody coming to the ball everybody was retreating the other way boy coming out of a timeout that's a hard pill to swallow those are usually a situation where they get a set play coming out of the out-of-bounds situation and just didn't get able to get in their offensive set. There's that backdoor yep, cut. Another turnover. A, yep, misfire that time as Mills' pass was intended for Weaver and out-of-bounds, and now 13 turnovers for the Samford Bulldogs. A new player into the ball game for Samford is Will Gardner. Hasn't played a whole lot, about seven minutes of ball game. Getting in there to, to spell some of the players for Sanford that usually average about 30-plus minutes a game. Yeah, Garner averaging less than one point and one rebound a game. A three around a screen that time for Sean Jepson. And Jepson took a little while to get turned, but he did get his shoulder square again. Nice release, knocked it down. He needed that to kind of get him off this track here. Now it's spinning. Bojan missed the shot that time by uh, Borjan. Back on the birds now with the lead. Vince Green forced up a shot. He's going to get to the foul line. 
where the Redbirds once more manage, appears to have been much more so aggressive here in the second half. Well, they're doing a couple of things. Defensively, they they picked up the pressure. They're going after the boards, trying to get in transition, wear this team down a little bit, take advantage of the depth that they have versus Sanford. Now Vince Green to the foul line where he has made eight of his ten free throws on the season. I keep waiting for Babukar Bojang to guard Brian Borjan in this game. No relation. No relation. And they've not been on the floor at the same time today. Until now. Well, Brian at least has a little more conventional yeah. first name. Yeah. Actually, Brian just took a seat on the Sanford bench, so as uh, Bojang comes into the game, Borjan leaves the game, so it's not going to happen, at least for a while. 45-39. ISU has its largest lead of the afternoon now, six points. As we approach the 10-minute mark left here in regulation at Redbird Arena, where ISU is playing its first home game in almost a month. They've been on the road for five straight, looking for some home cooking. Have a game today and a game tomorrow here at Redbird Arena. John Mills gives it up to Tyson Dorsey. He almost walks. Six seconds to shoot now. It's Eddie Harper on the perimeter. Now Mills with three to shoot. Ball tipped in the corner, and Alexander comes away. 15th Sanford turnover. Now Jebson for three. Just really pulled the string on it that time when he went up for the shot. Kind of faded back on it. Didn't really get his momentum going to the basket. Boy, what a big dagger that could have been. But now Mills tries to answer for three, banked it in. I'm watching him down the court. I don't think he called it. A little grin on his face, so still counts the same. And the Bulldogs have cut the Redbird lead from six to three. At nine and a half minutes to go here, 45-42. Now Dirk Williams turn around. Tough shot. Bojang, the offensive board. Lost it on the floor. Got it back. Got and foul. he's going to get to the foul line. Good effort that time by Bojang. Didn't need the dribble, really. He didn't go anywhere with it. Just kind of got his momentum to gather himself to go up to the basket. Good, strong rebound. But I do like the offensive activeness by Dirk Williams on the other baseline with the shot on the turnaround. And so now Bojang to the free throw line. It's his first trip to the foul line this afternoon. Again, Dirk Williams didn't get a good look at the basket. Bojang timed it very well, gets that one dribble he didn't need, almost lost the ball. But he is a very strong player inside, deceptively strong with his wiry strength about him. Shedrick Ford enters the game for ISU now. So the Redbirds have Ford, Jepson, Bojang, Green, and Dirk Williams on the floor. Sanford is countering with Tyson Dorsey. Will Gardner, that's him with the basketball there. Philip Romelli, who's still perfect from the field at six out of six. Corey Green. That's double dribble. And John certainly. Mills and another turnover. Boy, Sanford really has turned the ball over a lot here in the second half. And, and, and again, they threaded the needle that time, but Shedder Ford actually did a good job pushing the defense or the offensive player to the baseline and kind of put him in a no-win situation. Under nine minutes to go here. 46-42 ISU, four-point lead and a ball. Bojang backs in on Romelli. Turn around jumper. Rims, uh-uh, tipped up. Wow, and it's going to be, yep, Dirk Williams on the back. A little off-balance shot that time by Bojang. Didn't really get him his feet underneath him. Dirk Williams comes in with the over-the-back foul and trying to get the rebound. Cornell Felton, there you get a good look at him. He's in the ball game and he replaces Will Gardner, who was just basically in to give a couple of his teammates a quick breather. And that's probably the last time you'll see them out of the game. That was the spell right. they needed for this last eight-and-a-half-minute stretch. Yeah, I agree with you. So Sanford has its starting five back in the basketball game, probably for the duration here with eight and a half to go. Mills to Bojang. 
He really wants to go that left shoulder every time. That's yeah. got to be a travel. Romelli around Bojang, and he gave Not it up then to, to Mills, who knocked down the jumper. The guy moved both feet, took an extra step, should have been a travel, and instead they get a wide open three. Meanwhile, Dirk Williams finds Babokar Bojang, whose half hook goes down. Bojang really works hard in on the post to get position, and once he does, with those long arms, he's able to get the ball up at the basket. Now it's Green from the outside. His shot is no good, and Sean Jebson controls for Illinois State. Green really labored into that shot. Ford didn't really come out and pressure the shot. He was really wide open. Just really hesitated on it. Redbirds have three players at the scorer's table ready to check in at the next whistle. Green penetrates and drew a foul. And Green did not hesitate whatsoever taking that ball inside against Romelli. And now he'll go to the free throw line for one and bonus opportunity. We'll have that when we come back. 7.28 to go here till half to the regulation. 58. Bye. Alexander's father here. Tell me about this. Your son is doing an awesome job out here in the game. He's really stepped up and uh, come into action. You've got to be proud of him. Well, we are. And, uh, you know, he's worked for it for a long time. He's played. He plays uh, all the time and really works at making himself good. And uh, uh, he does a lot of the little things. It doesn't show up on the box scores and things. And uh, he just enjoys playing and he really enjoys ISU. Any advice for him? Does he come to you and say, what do I do, Dad? No, not now. He goes to Coach Richardson and that staff. But he, uh, you know, the only advice I give to him is to play hard and work hard, and he does that basically uh, all the time he's on the floor. All right, thanks a bunch. Back to you, Kurt and Matt. All right, Renee. Yeah, Greg Alexander, similar to Dirk Williams, those two are just gym rats. They love being in the gym, working on their game continuously. And Greg's had an outstanding freshman year so far. We cut away prematurely. You missed uh, both free throws by Vince Green. It's a 50-45 Redbird lead. 50-45 ISU with the lead. Now a backdoor lob and jam by Philip Romelli. Yeah, first time we've seen that. A good set play that time coming out of the timeout by Samford. See if Illinois State has an answer. So it's 50-47 now. The ISU advantage at the seven minute mark. Exactly seven minutes to go here. Here's Reed. Kicks it out behind the screen. It's Alexander for three. Yeah, he could have made his dad proud with that jump shot. That was a good pass cross court that time by Casey Reed. He's the only player for the Redbirds who's been on the floor who has not scored in this ball game. And now a steal by Bojang. He picked the pocket of Romelli, takes it all the way down and missed the layup. But Weaver, who was following the play, stepped on the end line as he rebounded it. Good hustle that time by Weaver, but Bojang again with his quickness can get out in the passing lane. Romelli was out on the perimeter. Good job by Bojang, but Romelli did not give up on the play. Was able to get down the floor and break it up. Three-point Redbird lead with a basketball and a turnover. That's the second time that the Redbirds have turned the ball over from an out-of-bounds play underneath their own basket. Here's a new wrinkle out of this offense by Sanford. They lull you to sleep, get beyond, behind the defense. The lay, the lay in that time by Romelli. He's seven out of seven in the ball game for 14 points. Mm -hmm. And now Sanford has a chance to cut it to one or tie it with a three. Felt missed the shot, Reed clears. Good help that time by Shedrick Ford coming over to meet him at the block. And now Randy Rice all the way down, but he got himself into trouble. Really begging for a foul that time, just didn't get it. Rice trying to create some offense out of transition once again. Vince Green's at the scores table. He'll likely check in for Randy Rice. Under six minutes to go here at Redbird Arena. There's no question ISU has tried to jam the ball down Sanford's throat here in the second That's half. That's a walk. Traveled again. Missed Guy the caught shot. the ball and took two steps. Got it back, too. Now on the other side, Mills for three. That rims in and out. And well, the Bojang Redbirds have the done board. a great job defensively of keeping the, the offensive players above them, but they are not getting to the three-point shooters. And a hook goes down by Casey Reed. I thought he got bumped underneath, too, but a good job by Casey Reed. Good, strong shot. Nice little jump hook from the block. Reed's first two points. ISU 52-47 the lead now. 
It's the same play that Bojan came up with the steal previously. That time called reaching in. Again, Ramelli out on the floor, and he picks up his second foul, third foul. And now Rice goes to the bench, so does Casey Reed. So Green, Alexander, Ford, Williams, and Bojang on the five on the floor for the Redbirds at the five-minute mark now. Left in this one. It's actually been the best offensive unit for the Redbirds in this ball game that's out there on the floor right now. Ford came over to help, but it's an offensive foul as Shedrick Ford snuck it on the backside. And that time, as opposed to previously in the ball game, Ford got all the way over there met him on the block. Watch where Shedrick Ford gets to when Relly catches this ball. He's outside the lane. Bojang does a good job, but he's outside. Ford meets him on the block, draws the contact before the ball leaves Romelli's hands. No basket going the other way for the Redbirds. Now Bojang, a collision yeah, and that a, is travel. a travel. That's a, that's a good call by the official, but Bojang's got to be able to take that ball up from 10 feet. He's got that perimeter game. And try instead he tries to get all the way to the basket you're just not gonna be able to do that against a defensive minded team like Sanford and a bumping foul right at the timeline right at midcourt Vince Green is whistled for bumping Weaver that's a nickel dimer right there fourth team foul on the Redbirds all right, so it's 4.30 left. Backdoor play again, but that time it was misfired. Weaver was again going for Ramelli, but it was a bad pass, and now the Redbirds have it back with a five-point lead. Boy, Green is aggressive, and he only came away with a steal that time. On the other end of the floor, Sanford had that back cut again for the lob, and just didn't execute it. Romelli never got on balance, and the ball came off the board. So the Redbirds run their offense with 15 seconds to shoot on this shot clock possession. Here's Bojang pull up from the foul line. Rims no good and tipped in by Ford. Good at Ford. That's where he can do the majority of his damage. He's up around the boards. Nice little tip in, but again, Bojang has the ability to take that 10-foot shot. Seven-point Redbird lead, largest of the game. Jimmy Tillett, the Sanford head coach, has lost his jacket now. Green may have walked, he did. 21 turnovers for Sanford now. Officials time out on the floor, 3.39 to go. ISU 54, Sanford 47 telecast is presented by the authority of Illinois State University and WMBD television and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Illinois State University and WMBD TV. Our next televised game, February the 5th, 7 o'clock, ISU and Bradley. Need we say any more? We get a little vacation between now and then. Redbirds offensively still done a great job of getting the ball inside 28 out of their 54 points have been inside the paint and here's Shedrick Ford with a nice tip in to give the Redbirds a, Redbirds a seven point lead. Nice athletic play there by Ford who's really been held at bay throughout the afternoon. Just six points for Ford. Under three and a half here to go. Redbirds lead it by seven. 54-47. And now Bojang on the baseline. No good. Ford had the ball out of bounds. Off his hands. And Bojang has been very active offensively as well. He has 11 shots in the ball game, right. 11 points to lead the way for the Redbirds. Good point. He is not shot away from putting it up. <laughs> Sanford trying to get back into their original offensive set, Push, moving the ball out on the floor to get their back cut opportunities. There they throw it away once again. Fourteen of their 22 turnovers have come here in the second half. And as we said earlier, Jimmy Tillett shed his jacket some time ago, and he's pacing the sidelines. What a job he's done at Sanford for sure. He's just 12 victories shy of being the school's all-time winning as coach. And in 1999 and 2000, he took this Sanford ball club to the NCAA tournament. Perhaps those of you who are 
bracket heads can remember those names when you see Samford in the field of 64. They've been there two of the last three seasons. And somewhat of a rebuilding team. They do have three seniors, but they also have 10 freshmen and sophomores on this ball club. So a little bit of an inexperienced team here in the early going, but still at 4-2 and two with the number of road games they have. These kids have definitely got a lot of experience on them now. Vince Green for three. It's a 10-point Redbird lead. What a big basket that was now. Yeah, Green definitely does not lack any confidence out there for the Redbirds. His second three-pointer of the afternoon. He has 10 points now, and that's what the Redbird lead is. Now Green's going to try for three at the other end. Sanford's Green can't get it. Tip to Harper, who lays it in. Boy, Jepson really did a good job of trying to take the charge that time as Harper went inside, kicked the ball out to the perimeter, didn't get the call, and he was late getting back up off the floor to get involved in the play defensively once again. Samford calls timeout now. Two minutes and three seconds to go here in regulation with Illinois State leading Samford 57 to 49. Redbirds 11 out of 14 in free throws in the ball game. And Vince Green, the first year player, Knocks down the big three to give the Redbirds a 10-point lead momentarily. Sanford cut it back to eight with the lane at the other end. But again, the Redbirds right now need to concentrate on knocking these free throws down because more likely it would be free throw opportunities coming their way. You know, what's so surprising in this second half for Sanford is they're the number one team in the Atlantic Sun, the conference in which they play, in assist to turnover ratio. They usually do a pretty good job of taking care of the basketball, but they've got 15 turnovers here in the second half. Well, the Redbirds have really adjusted defensively well to what they're trying to do with these back cuts. They're not letting their, their offensive player get below them on defense, and that's created a lot of those turnover situations for Sanford. But what they have been successful at here in this half is driving the ball, drawing the defense over, and kicking the ball out on the perimeter. You know, that's something that's given the Redbirds a lot of problems, and we'll see that happen right here. Harper drives to the basket, kicks it out to the perimeter. The open look here by Corey Green. He's not able to knock down the shot, but he gets, again, Harper's done a great job of staying active in this ball game, gets the ball back, and lays it in as the defense is a little slow and rotating over. Well, Romelli has been the big offensive threat for the Bulldogs. Seven out of seven from the field. He has 14 points, and he is the game's leading scorer. The Redbirds of Tom Richardson have three players in double figures. Babukar Bojang has 11, and both Vince Green and Dirk Williams have 10. And with the, this team out on the floor, Bojang might be the player that you would look at for Sanford to foul. He's shooting about 67% on the season. And again, nobody comes to the ball on out-of-bounds play. you gotta, you got to go to the ball. You can't all go away from the basketball. Makes it a much more difficult pass for the guy taking it out of bounds. Yeah, Alexander having a tough time getting the ball in bounds there. And Cornell Felton almost took out a couple of the radio guys on press row. Under two minutes to go here now. You see the time in the corner. It's a 57-49 Illinois State lead. Hacked that time. Harper hacked Bojang. And there you said it, Matt. If you're going to foul one guy, that's the guy you want to send to the line. Well, you could see clearly that that was their intent. And Romelli had four fouls. So you could see that even by putting Harper on Bojang, that that was exactly what they are going to do. Romelli with four. They didn't want him to pick up his fifth. So Harper that time was sacrificed and picks up his second. So Babukar Bojang goes to the free throw line. Shedrick Ford is in for Dirk Williams. Randy Rice is in for Sean Jepson. We're getting a little bit of an offense for defense switch right now with better defensive players and Randy Rice and Shedrick Ford coming out on the floor. We'll see if the strategy to foul Bojang pays off. It did. So Sanford picked the right guy to foul. Weaver comes away with a missed free throw and a chance to cut into that Redbird lead. And even the two free throws that Bojang has missed, they've really hung on the rim and just haven't gone down. Here's where the Bulldogs are so dangerous because Boy, they like to shoot the three. There's Weaver for three, and there's going to be a loose ball foul on the rebound. There's a push after the shot. I don't know if they'll call that during the shot attempt or not. No, they're going to call it out of bounds on the side. That'll be the 15th foul. It's whistled against Shedrick Ford. After the shot occurs here, they just swing the ball around the perimeter. He tries to block out, and that's where the foul occurred. So the Bulldogs again will run their offense on the perimeter. Weaver had his shot changed and 
Harper down low found Green who scored. Fortunate to come away with a basket there. They really were, and Bojang really was slow rotating over to try to help out defensively once again. The Redbirds just has not done a very good job inside once the guys in the, in the paint of coming over and helping defensively. And so the Bulldogs call a 30-second timeout with a minute 16 left here, and the Redbirds with a six-point lead. Let's go to Renee Charles. For we're having and listening, uh, Kurt, to uh, the Coach Richardson. He's telling the guys he doesn't understand why they can't get under the basket. Get in there. Get some layups. Stanford's doing it. They're getting in the back door and scoring. Why aren't we? And that's what he's going to push the guys to do. Well, certainly that was a philosophy, man, that has worked in the second half. The Redbirds certainly much more aggressive. And you think the adjustments that Tom Richardson made at halftime had much to do with taking the ball to the basket. Well, some of the baskets the Redbirds have gotten in the second half have been more of posting up on the block rather than actual layups. But they've truly done a better job of getting in the paint and scoring at will. And Greg Alexander was fouled in the backcourt. And the Redbirds trying to put their good free throw shooters on the line. Jimmy Tillett not happy with that choice of players to foul. And Alexander shooting 83% on the right. season. Only 10 out of 12, so hasn't been there with regularity. But that might be another opportunity for them to send a freshman to the line. Well, you got to make good on those free throws here in the final two minutes. It was hard off the back iron that time by Greg Alexander. And Bojang is back in, and Dirk Williams back to the Redbird bench. Alexander held scoreless in the first half. Has all five of his points in the second half. He missed both free throws, but Boo tips it in. What Bo a Jake big basket. Snuck inside. Good substitution that time by Coach Tom Richardson to get him in there. And again, he got around Romelli with four fouls. And a five-second call against Chris Weaver as he couldn't get the ball inbounds. What a turn of events. A great pressure off on the after the free throw made. Redbirds really down there pressuring the inbounds pass. And again, Bojang with his long arms really prevented them from getting the ball inbounds. ISU went from a situation where Greg Alexander perhaps was going to miss two free throws and Sanford bring the ball up the floor, down six with the ball, to a point where he missed both, both free throws Babukar Bojank tips in, and the Redbirds get the ball back. And they're able to substitute their supposedly better free throw shooters back on the floor. Correct. As we approach the one-minute mark left in this one, and Vince Green is fouled way out at half court that time by Cornell Felton. And I know Coach Tom Richardson likes that situation, having Vince Green on the free throw line. Missed his first two in the ball game, but since then he's made four out of four. This, this kid is really a gamer out there and has really played well today. As we mentioned, the last time the Redbirds had a four-game losing streak, it was January of 2000, and they're trying to snap a four-gamer here this afternoon. And with another opponent coming in tomorrow for an afternoon game, the Redbirds have to turn around quickly and make sure they've got enough in the engine for tomorrow. And we talked about their depth that they play with on the team. They've, they've played nine games here today, or nine teams, players here today, with that depth that might help them in turning around and playing again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Weaver lost the ball. Vince Green came away with it. Actually, it's going to be Bojang now who is going to get credit for the steal. And Randy Rice is fouled in the backcourt that time by Corey Green. Good job defensively that time. Greg Alexander did a good job of sliding over to help out. That's going to be five fouls on yep. Corey Green. He finished the ball game with only six points. A little bit of a frustrating afternoon for him. Where the Redbirds have taken advantage of the turnover situation where they have scored... 14 points in the second half off Sanford turnovers. And Chris Weaver really turns the corner and is able to get to the basket easily, but Greg Alexander again meeting him outside the lane, almost draws the charge. Weaver tries to go up and get draw the foul, and the Redbirds come away with yet another turnover. Now Randy Rice makes the first free throw. He doesn't get to the foul line often. In fact, uh, he's three out of three this afternoon, but just three of four prior to, uh, for the season, prior to coming into this ballgame. So he's Four out of four here today, and now seven out of eight on the season. And the Redbird lead is 12, 63-51, biggest advantage of the afternoon. We will join the Duke-Michigan College basketball game in progress as soon as we complete this action here at Redbird Arena. Harper for three. Boy, the Bulldogs aren't going to give up. They've still got a couple of bullets left in the gun, and Vince Green is fouled in the backcourt that time by Will Gardner. Harper's a good-looking player. He's 6'5" sophomore he's really contributed off the bench for them both defensively and offensively he's hit a couple of big three-point shots 
to keep this game a little close, but I'd, I'd say with a, a nine-point lead and about 30 seconds to play, the Redbirds have this one in the bag. And so Green, who was just at the foul line a, a minute ago, is back there again, making good on his foul shots. And again, the Redbirds will have Central Michigan in here tomorrow at 3 o'clock, two games in two days. That's 14 points now for Vince Green in the ballgame, leading the way for the Redbirds in scoring. That is a new career high for Green. And the fight song has already begun under the Redbird basket. Under 20 seconds to go here. Backdoor cut, picked off that time by Randy Rice. 25 turnovers for the Sanford Bulldogs. And that won't get the job done on the road. And the Redbirds... Four-game losing streak is now history. The final seconds tick off, and ISU leaves Redbird Arena with a 65-54 win. Redbird 65, Sanford 54. Back to wrap things up in a minute. Redbirds a winner, 65-54 over the Samford Bulldogs here at Redbird Arena, breaking a four-game losing streak. Kurt Pegler, Matt Taphorn with you. A much-needed victory. Despite the fact that Samford comes in and shoots better than 50%, the Redbirds still get the win. They do. Good team effort. Only 11 turnovers on the offensive end. Good team effort. A lot of balance out there offensively. They did a good job of handling that back-cut offense and the perimeter offense that, that Samford brought in here, and a good victory home-cooked style for the Redbirds today. A much-needed win. It was, we take a look at three players in double figures led by Vince Green's uh, 14 points. The Redbirds trying to spread the wealth out, and when you don't get big performances from Cedric Ford and Sean Jepson and still win, you'll take it. Well, we talked about the loss of Therese Bryson this year. That type of loss, a guy who scored 23 points a game for him, you need to spread that offensive out offensive output amongst all the players on the team and they did that today everybody contributed in their own way all right the Redbirds improved to three and four on the season and the Sanford Bulldogs dropped to four and three final score once again ISU 65 Sanford 54 for our sideline reporter Renee Charles and for Matt Taphorn this is Kurt Pegler stay tuned Duke and Michigan up next here on CBS 31